Hello everyone, it's me, Kalo. Welcome to another episode of Kalo TV. In today's menu, we have a demo released this April the 5th, so let's take a look into Big Face and why you should give it a shot. In an abandoned building in the middle of nowhere, several people wearing masks gather, waiting for the show to start, while having a small gorgeous chatting quietly. The odd silence of the place is suddenly interrupted when a white band arrives. And so it begins. You wake up in a pool of dry blood, feeling dizzy, lost even. As you take a look at your surroundings, you find yourself in a wrecked room with graffiti on the walls and no furniture except for a table with a TV on it. It seems that you are not alone, for it doesn't take too much time before you notice the camera in the upper corner, observing your every move. And then, the TV lights on. Hello. My name is unimportant to you right now, and I'll spare you a lengthy speech. But I will tell you that you have a bomb collar around your neck. A bomb collar that I will detonate if I feel you're stepping out of line. You know what you did to deserve this, that it was only a matter of time. In a moment, the door to my right will open. You'll make your way through our little test. It's my hope that you can follow instructions properly. We can make something out of this if you can cooperate. We'll talk soon. Funny how you don't even know your name or what is that that you have done to deserve to be here, but you can't do much aside from crossing the doorway. Wouldn't want the guy to detonate the bomb around your neck, right? You make your way through the corridors of the warehouse until you run into another TV with Mr. Bonnie on the speakers, ready to have a word with you. Beside me is a sledgehammer, and through the door, there are men who want to kill you. I've told each of them they will receive $10,000 if they can put you down. Personally, I don't think they have a fucking chance, but I've been proven wrong before. Don't disappoint me, and good luck. The rules of the game are set. You have no time to waste, so you grab the sledgehammer and make your way through the first guys relatively easily. But if the sledgehammer feels too slow for you, you can also steal one of their smaller hammers, exchanging strength for dexterity. You think you have the hang of it as you get rid of the last two people in a very dark room just to get greeted by one last TV. You made quick work of them. I didn't really doubt you for a second. Through this door, there's a shooting range. You can practice for as long as you want. There's ammo crates and morphine injectors in case you're hurt. After that, there's a combat test. I'll be waiting for you at the end. Welcome to the shooting range! A safe space for you to practice. As you can tell in the interface of the game, you don't have the usual cross to aim. So if you want to work on your shooting skills, you can just pull this lever to start practicing. For the demo, you're given away the array of tools. And something very important to remark is the option of weapons with a silencer. Now, if you have played games such as Hotline Miami or Hitman, you know how this goes. You can approach this game as you would like. Going melee assures for a silent fast kill, and while firearms make everything easier, they are also very loud. I mean, blasting a guy with a shotgun is very satisfying, but when the sound alarms every enemy in the facility, it can be very troublesome. Unless you don't care, and that's precisely what you want to position yourself in a place that allows you to receive every enemy running towards you in a death corridor of massive destruction! The rest is on you, really. Make your way through the circuit, kill everyone in your way, and try to make it to the end in one piece to meet with your new employer. Well, you're not dead, and you made good time. Decidedly, you've done a very good job. Myself and my associates all agree that you and I are going to make a lot of money together. I look forward to working with you. Or perhaps you want to take a detour. Cause maybe there's another way out of here, right? Hey, hey, I just work here. You can leave. Please, just go.
Yeah, no. It doesn't seem like you are leaving this deal anytime soon. Anyway, you can play the demo in Tito's Ichio for free. I'll leave the link down in the description. Not only does it have the warehouse level, but also work in progress of a motel that you can explore and play around. So go check that out sometime. Now, this is the part where we make some questions to the dev of the day, Tito, about his work regarding Pigface. So here we go. Hello viewers, just so you know, I am not actually the developer of the game, I am just going to be doing a voiceover for the answers that he gave over text. Hope you enjoy. What can you tell us about the mastermind behind the game? I wouldn't say that I'm a mastermind, rather I'd consider myself a restless and oftentimes stubborn creative. In truth, I don't really know what I'm doing, I just try to solve little design problems one at a time and learn as I go. Outside of game development, I'm a published writer, one short story and a few poems. Who hopes one day to write a book or two? I also make music from time to time. I really just like making things no matter what and I'm not necessarily good at any of these things, it's just that I try to put it out there into the world and hope that people enjoy it. That's the way to go really. If you had to describe your game in one quote, what would it be? A game about contract killing that is uncomfortably violent and immersive. And what would you say are your inspirations for the project? I'm sensing some hostile Hotline Miami vibes. Mechanically, this project is inspired by Cruelty Squad, Hotline Miami, Dishonored, and the Hitman series. Visually, this project is inspired by Rockstar games from the 2000s, specifically Manhunt, as well as movies like The Matrix, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Saw. Hmm, I see. And what are your thoughts on your progress so far? In terms of progress, I think I'm in a good spot. The basic gameplay around combat has been implemented and the way firearms work is 99% complete. The melee combat still needs to be improved and additional gameplay features need to be added, like ergonomic stats per weapon that affect player movement and handling. The parts of the game like missions, levels, the player hub and the kit screen where you select your armor, mask and weapon before going into a mission still need to be implemented. Right now, Pickface functions well as a proof of concept for shooting and melee combat, but not much more than that. Overall though, I feel very good about the state the game is in. It will serve as a fantastic foundation for the rest of the game I want to create. Yeah, I agree. The demo has the basics pretty well settled. Speaking of which, what does your workflow for Pigface look like? My workflow is a mixed bag of things since I'm basically doing everything myself. I have two videos about how I create models for my games on my YouTube channel. That'll do a more thorough job of showing how I make stuff than what I can say here. The short version is that I take a photo either from the internet or with my phone, throw them into Blender as planes, block out the general shape of the item or object I'm creating, and then I wrap the texture around the object as best I can. It gives my game's models a source engine look that I really like. It also lets me put a lot of detail in the textures so that I don't have to create complex meshes for models. In terms of level design, the combat warehouse that is featured in the mini demo was created by creating a large empty room with pillars holding up the roof, and then marking a checklist of things I needed to teach the player in order to justify having a combat test at the end of the level. I took pen and paper and started sketching out rooms for the players to walk through and learn about the game's mechanics in an organic way. As the level progressed and filled up with more stuff, I had to design the final area like a maze. It was a very interesting way to design a level, and I'm going to design a few levels like this for the main game since pure improvisation can create very intricate and unique results. Well, talk about being a jack of all trades. And tell me, how different is your game now from the original concept? Originally, the game was going to be about a serial killer with a pig mask that would walk around public areas like libraries or subway stations and scout out people to kill. You didn't start with the mask on, and that was to make sure you didn't freak anyone out. Once you were ready, you'd put on the mask and that's when you could pull out your weapons. You would then try to kill as many people as you could before the cops were called or people ran away. That game never formed as it felt a little too edgy and the idea of making a bunch of levels with defenseless people in them felt a bit boring. I still like the idea of it however and might try it again at some point as a spin-off of Pigface. Oh, that gets me flashbacks of 2015. What a year! Anyway, what's your favorite part of working on this? My favorite part about working on this project is that I genuinely want to play the game that I'm making. The only reason I'm developing Pickface is because I want to play a game with semi-realistic gunplay and NPCs that actively ragged all around when you knock them over or blow them up, etc. I'm basically making a big garbage-filled playground for myself and it's awesome! That is such a power move to do. And what about the least favorite? My least favorite part about working on this project is lighting. Anything to do with lighting sucks! 
It tanks your performance if you use real-time lights, but it looks so good. And if you bake lights, you can't dynamically light things like NPCs or physical objects, and the bake light lamps take up a huge chunk of space in the game itself. I always run into a brick wall when it comes to lights because it interferes so much with what I want to design. But I think I'm going to stick with low resolution real-time lights for this game since it fits the aesthetic and doesn't impact performance as much as 4K soft shadowed lights would. Sounds like a good solution to me. Do you have any previous experience before this project? I recall seeing some other works on your YouTube page. Before this project, I made a bunch of little prototype games. Notably though, in 2019-2021, I worked on a boomer shooter that went through many iterations before it was scrapped for being uninspired and too difficult to make. In 2022, I was making a horror game that also went through a few iterations and was also scrapped for the same reasons. You can still play the demo, but I won't be continuing development of that project since it was so dull. Around 2023, I pivoted to making Pickface because I realized I wouldn't have played either of the two big games I was trying to make. When you pivot your focus onto something you both care about and would actually play, it really changes how you develop things and you start to love the process. Well, I'm glad you found that in Pickface. Do you have any final thoughts on the matter that you want to share? My final thoughts regarding my project are that I need to strike a balance with detailing levels before I can start working on them one after the other. The combat demo that I made features one giant warehouse with interconnected rooms and plenty of real-time lights, and I think it's at the limit of what I want to make the game look like. Overall though, I think I've landed on an aesthetic that I really like to make and I'm good at pulling off, and that I'm ready to move forward with the game and create a new demo that features all of the mechanics that I haven't yet added. I'm really excited for what the future holds and can't wait to show more people my game and hopefully make something that's just fun to run around and cause havoc in. I would say this is a very promising project and I look forward to see how it develops. Personally, I think it would be great to have some influence from games like Condemned regarding the enemy's behavior as well, but we'll have to see. You can follow Tito's journey on Twitter to see more about the development of the game. Apparently, Happy Masks won't be the only NPCs you have to deal with. Also, did you know the world record for this demo is apparently 7 seconds? If you can beat that, please let me know in the comments. If you like the soundtrack of this video, just so you know it was made by Tita himself, I'll leave a link here to his SoundCloud. That's all for now friends, I hope you have a lovely day. If you like this video, please consider leaving a comment and a like. To see more cool projects like this one, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time!